In this video, we're going to talk about vector shapes in tumult hype. We're going to get into curves, anchor points, control points, tracing curves, and complex shapes. So let's get started. We have two different waves on the scene. I'm going to go ahead and enter vector shape mode and try and trace them and create a few different curves as we go. So I'm going to start by clicking on this first point, and then I'm going to find this sort of midpoint of the curve and then click and drag to create my curve. I'm going to just continue along a little bit and you'll notice that the farther my drag is the steeper my curves are. So that's pretty close. We can then double click on our shape to make sure we're in uh, vector mode and then we can adjust the curves as needed. So you'll notice that the control point here that I adjust is separate from the other one, but the angle between the two control points is connected. This type of anchor point mode is called asymmetric. And when you have an asymmetric curve, you have a continuous flow of the curve because the angle is connected but you've got separate slopes on the two different sides of your anchor point. Now when you're working with these anchor points to adjust them, you can click while holding Command or Shift to select multiple points. And if you want to completely delete one, you can just hit Delete. If you wanted to add a curve to a pre-existing shape, if you hover over the edge of your shape, you can simply click and drag to create one and then move it around as you as you want. When you're tracing objects like this, setting your visibility down a little bit will help you see the objects below. Now in this next shape uh, below, we have kind of a steeper curve here and I'm going to show you how to create that with the vector tool. I'm going to press V on the keyboard to enter vector mode and then click and drag again to um, draw my curves. I'm just going to single click without dragging to create a corner point here. And then I'm going to continue on with my curves and click and drag where I have curves. Then I'm going to close out my shape again by clicking on that first point to close it. So this is a different type of point. It's a corner point. You can see all the different modes here for your anchor points. If we wanted to change this corner point to a point with two separate slopes coming out of it, we can change it to a disconnected point. And that gives you two separate control points that can be independently changed coming out of that anchor point. It gives you a little more freedom and it doesn't give you a smooth continuation from this segment to this segment. Now the other type is mirrored. When you select mirrored, both the angle and the slopes of the two sides are connected. So those are the separate anchor point modes. Uh, to review, you've got asymmetric, which keeps the angle connected and allows you to adjust independently the two curves on either side. And then you have mirrored, where both the angle and both slopes are the same. And then disconnected, which is what we used here to separate the slopes from one another. And then corner point, which does not create a curve coming immediately out of this anchor point. So now switching over to here, I'm going to talk a little bit about tracing objects. There's a couple different ways if we wanted to recreate this image with a vector tool. You could either click on each of the separate objects corners, and I can do that on this object too. and then later on drag out my curves. Now I'm just clicking and dragging on a part in the 
curve where it seems like that curve would fit. And you can use your arrow keys to really fine tune your anchor point positions. So that's one way. The other way is to, as we did in the previous scene, drawing your curves as you go. So click and drag and click if you just want a regular point and then we can adjust later. So I'm going to hold command which is a keyboard shortcut for creating a disconnected curve so that I can independently adjust this control point. And I'm going to use the arrow keys just to adjust this and then click and drag to finish this curve. Another convenient way to trace objects is to use the pencil tool. Select the pencil tool from the elements toolbar and select pencil. You can also select P on the keyboard. So with this selected, I'm going to increase the smoothing to about 10. And since we don't need a line draw animation, I'm going to uncheck that. And since this sail shape I'm going to trace is a closed shape, I'm going to select this close path when near line start option. And then the only thing to do is trace around the object as best you can. You'll have a lot of smoothing, so feel free to make mistakes. And then get back near the beginning. So now we have a pretty good shape with a couple adjustments, maybe deleting a couple anchor points. We have a pretty good um, curve around this sail. And that's it. That is one more way to do tracing in height. Just like when you're working with regular elements in Hype, you can add objects to a group and easily work with them. And that gives you a little folder in your element list. So I could call this boat. And I can hold command and set the scale of these objects all as one. You can see that that adjusts this width property here in the scale field in the metrics inspector. And that gives me really good control over um, moving these objects around and say I wanted to make this sort of a, a decal on the sail. Vector shapes are great for this type of thing. So that's a quick overview of working with and creating curves and combining complex shapes to create objects like this. We've got uh, several separate vector shape objects that compose this sailboat and it was all created with standard curves in Hype 4. If you have any questions about this video please leave them in the comments below. In later videos we're going to be talking about animation and some more of the properties that you see here down the side of the inspector.